Alzheimer's disease is a very dreaded disease that will affect 50% of us by the time we're 85 years old. And with the baby boomer uh, population that's growing, that's a frightening uh, consequence that we have to face. We don't really know the answers to what causes Alzheimer's disease, though we know a lot about it. We know that there are toxic proteins that are found in the brain, things called beta amyloid, and, t and tau tangles that are found there. We know that there are genetic factors, the APOE4 gene, if you have, puts you at increased risk for it. We know that there's a de decrease in the production of ATP, the energy currency of the cell. We know that if there's not enough energy there, you get like, like an electrical brownout, which we'll talk about, we'll talk about in a, later in this talk. We also know that flu shots have been suspected of increasing the risk of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, a researcher who has published uh, many uh, journal articles in, in, about this has come out saying that if you had four shots, uh, flu shots, in a period of 10 years, the risk for Alzheimer's disease is up 25 or more percent. That's Hugh Feudenberg. And it's probably because there's a lot of mercury and aluminum in them. At least that was his suspicion. We know that sugar puts us at increased risk for developing uh, Alzheimer's disease because it's inflammatory and because it tends to cause poisoning of proteins in a process called glycation, particularly in people who are diabetics. We know that people who have low antioxidant levels in their body tend to be at an increased risk, particularly vitamin E, but also vitamin C, and a lot of the general antioxidants that we have in our foods. Vitamin D deficiency is known to, to do this because vitamin D now we know helps clear amyloid as does curcumin so there are two possible treatments there. We're moving more in a direction of looking for nutritional ways to try and support and improve memory in people who have Alzheimer's disease. And there was a study that was done at MIT and it was published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease that showed that there are some nutritional approaches that can actually do something that are significant to help promote the connections between brain cells. We know that in Alzheimer's disease, we lose those synapses, we lose those connections. And without those connections, the brain malfunctions. And what they studied was the combination of choline, uridine, and DHA, which is the uh, fish oil product that is uh, highest in tuna oil. The product that, that, was, uh, that was used is called Sovanade. And what they found is in 300 patients with mild Alzheimer's disease, that 40% of them improved versus 24% of the placebo group. So we know it works in mild Alzheimer's disease, but once it gets beyond that phase, it's too late. There are other ways that we can look at treating uh, nutritionally the problems that we see with Alzheimer's disease. When we have a lack of energy production, we can't make enough ATP, we can shift the way the brain functions and, uh, and its products that it uses to make energy. We know that there's this thing called the ketogenic diet, which is something that can be used in people who have seizures. And it shifts the way the brain makes energy so that it can make ATP when alternative sources are not so good. So feeding people coconut oil, which is a wonderful saturated fat that tends to make ketone bodies form, allows the brain to use this alternative form of energy that can be very uh, effective at uh, helping it to continue to make ATP, particularly in the early phases, phases of Alzheimer's disease. So there's a lot that can be done. There's a lot of theory that's going into looking at how we can maintain all those kinds of substances, those chemicals that our body needs to be able to make energy, rather than using the drugs that we're using which are acetylcholinesterase inhibitors such as Aricept and Exelon and Razad, or NMDA inhibitors such as Namenda, which really don't do much, particularly the acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. They basically do about nothing. And Namenda maybe delays hospitalization by three or four months, so it's nothing to be excited about. Plus, there are a lot of side effects associated with these drugs that range from nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, ulcers, headaches, seizures, syncope, fatigue, and lots of other things. So we need a better way to deal with people who have Alzheimer's. The MIT people are coming out with an idea of how to provide 
alternative energy sources and to protect uh, against the energy defects that we see may be part of the answer. But it looks like there are lots of reasons why we develop Alzheimer's disease and we should look at each person as an individual person and then look at, at the various aspects of what we've discussed in this presentation to see which ones apply to you and what you can do to change the outcome of this dreaded disease.